to Tuesday morning and the, the reading, the first reading from Exodus, if you want to really get the thing, you look at, okay, it's the story of Moses and crossing of the Red Sea, okay? All right, go see the movie, The Ten Commandments. They did a really, that was in the 50s, real literal uh, presentation of this, I think, starring Charlton Heston as uh, Moses and, of course, Yul Brenner was Pharaoh. Yeah. Anyway, if you want to see, it's a good depiction of it. But, you know, I prefer the gospel, okay, to share it with you. See, what I want to show you, what I mean when I thought is, see, Christ flips the logic. I said that a few weeks ago to you. He flips the logic. He doesn't abandon the Old Testament. He, he radicalizes it. And he does it in a shocking manner, but he makes his point, okay? You see? I'll show you. And he gives a new concept of what it is to belong to the family of God. In the Jewish uh, tradition, obviously, okay, it is both physical and spiritual, meaning you're a believer, you're a believer in, in law, in the Jewish law, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it was also physical heritage. You were a Jew. You, you belong to tribal Judaism, see? Christianity is not tribal. It's universal. It's rooted in faith. Now, Christ is going to make that point. Watch Moses do this. Moses is going to, uh, Moses, watch St. Matthew, try it again. Watch St. Matthew do it, okay, in the gospel. He's talking to Jews. He's going to rattle their cage. In this sense, he's going to radicalize Christianity in a way that they can't miss it. And therefore, they're going to have to choose. Do they believe in Christ or not? Because he's going to go right at the most fundamental laws in the Judaic Hebraic tradition, and he's going to transcend them, but they're radically transcended. So he's going to go beyond tribalism to globalism, not based on biology, but on faith. He's challenging, okay, and this is Christ, but obviously St. Matthew's, <laughs> we used to say as an ax to grind, he is making his point to precisely those people who have to make this choice. So what, look what he says here. It's again, it's chapter 12 in Matthew. While Jesus was speaking to the crowds, his mother and his brothers appeared outside, wishing to speak with him. In, the, in any ancient tradition of morality, even to this day, the most fundamental moral unit is your family. Okay? You start with the family and you work in concentric circles out. The entire ancient world of moralities based on those concentric circles. It's not just Judaism across the board, it's tribalism. You begin with the family and all your tribal members. You keep going out and out. When you finally get outside, there's what they mean by what it is to be a neighbor. It means you belong inside the concentric circles. Outside, there isn't like a, a mere stranger, it's the enemy. It's the enemy, okay? This is an ethic of survival. Uh, really ethnic or survival. You could say uh, tribal survival. That's the word. I'm really having a tough moment, uh, time here saying what I'm thinking, okay? I'm sorry. But watch what he says here, okay? So fundamentally is the family. And you spin out from there concentric circles of, of obligation and belonging, okay? Alrighty? When you reach the foreigner, that's your enemy. Okay? Now watch what he says. But when he but he said now he's, he says your mother and your brothers are standing outside asking to speak with you, but he said in reply to the one who told him, "Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? What are you kidding me? What are you kidding me?" He's asking the very foundation, the entire moral code. <laughs> he's challenging it because he's going to show you it's more than bloodline. Stretching out his hand toward his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father is my brother and sister and mother. Whoever does the will of my father, it has nothing to do with heritage, bloodline, or anything else. It's not tribal. It's global. Imagine him writing this they're writing this to Jewish Christians. I believe in Rome, okay? I could be stretching it there. He's saying, see that Roman over there? That Roman believes in Christ. He's as much, he is a brother of Christ. He is our brother. What? He's our brother. He's a believer. 
You see, he believes in Christ. Say that? Whoever does the will of my Father, my Heavenly Father, is my brother, my sister, and my mother. You see, that totally transcends, totally transcends uh, tribalism. It's also in my two cents worth, whatever it's worth to you, the hope of the world. Because we need more than universal laws and military constraints. In other words, to, to make for a peaceful world, we have to see the human family as a singular family. I really think Christianity is the only hope of civilization. I really mean that. I'm trying to be parochial or nothing. I'm actually the opposite of parochial. I'm a globalist, universalist. Christianity, because it knows no boundaries. It is now neither bounded by heritage, blood, or land. It's by, it's bounded by faith, the, 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 faith, faith in Christ and love through Christ of all humanity. There are no strangers, there are no enemies. We are only neighbors, friends together. I love that line, friends together. I take it as a verb, together, meaning we actively are neighbor to each other. See, even the word neighbor doesn't mean who lives next door to you. It's who is in your circle. And the circle is all humanity. We are neighbor to each other, and we must act as neighbor to each other. We are brothers to each other. We are sisters to each other. We are parents to each other. We are mothers and fathers to each other. It's neat, isn't it? I really see that as the hope of the, hope of the world. I do see it that way. Now that we are really engaging in a global humanity, where uh, our communications are totally global, our economic systems are global, the very few parts of the world that are unaffected by the, by the economic systems in play, our, our communications are universal. Everyone has access to information, etc. Therefore, we have, for the first time in history, the history of the human race, a trans-tribal uh, global community. And we have a chance to be united, but we need to be united, not by strategic calculation, but we need, by, we need to be united by love. And what will unite us by love is we have to see each other in a singular person who is the source of that love, and that's Christ. It's not just God the Father, it is Christ and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. The animation of, the, of love, that's the Holy Spirit. Together, in loving Christ, we love each other. We love each other. That's really the truth, and that is going to take, that has got to be the preaching of the church of the world. We are brothers and sisters to each other. No one is outside the pale, nobody. Nobody. And that's our hope, I think. And I think that's what John the twenty third, Pope John the twenty third, saw back fifty, sixty years ago, that the global community was either going to fraction itself up in a world of hell, which was the first half of the twentieth century, or it was going to unite to Christ. And he saw the Second Vatican Council as the first step in proclaiming a gospel of peace to a world through its unit, but by creating a, a unity of humanity, a global humanity in Christ and through Christ. In a sense, the global church. Not a church of clergy of this and that, a global church of intimate communion with each other in Christ and through Christ. I believe he was absolutely right. It won't be in my lifetime, but it may, it, I hope it'll be the future humankind that the gospel will be that which unites us. As imperfect and sinful as we are, it will unite us as a, as a family of God. I mean that. Instead of a blood family, or an ethnic family, or a, a geographic family, a global family, but only in the family of Christ, in the body of Christ, the church, you see? The body of Christ, the church. Yeah. Not trying to stick up for the church and think the church is the body of Christ. It's the hope of humanity. It's the hope of humanity. And I think John the Twenty Third saw that in a world of hell, the hellish first half of the twentieth century. He saw the hope was in the Christ and in the church 
for the global humanity that was evolving. Will it be a, a humanity of horrors rooted in horror or in the hope and love of Christ himself? <laughs>